was all excited to go fishing with you, Pete. <laughs> Jojo, how you doing, buddy? Everybody's great, you? Good to see you. Good luck. What's cool about Biscayne Bay to me is it's where I grew up as a little kid, actually saltwater fishing. It's where I learned how to bone fish and permit fish. First time I actually picked up a fly rod was in Biscayne Bay with an old fishing guide named Bill Curtis. That same day, I was eight years old, I caught my first bonefish. So I have a lot of fond memories and every time I, I visit it, even though I've been fishing there now professionally for over 30 years, I'll visit flats that I remember as, as a little kid catching a fish there. So I have a lot of fond memories here. It's a very cool ecosystem. It dumps right out into the Atlantic Ocean. And it's basically the foreground for what you see in the Florida Keys. Because it is a great ecosystem for the small bait fish, crabs and shrimp, because the bay is shallow, because the water's clear, it's one of the best habitats in the whole Florida Keys chain to fish for bonefish permanent tarpon. Biscayne Bay is a very tide dependent fishery. You know, you only have small windows to fish certain areas for certain fish. Uh, you usually want to start, start the morning off while you have low light, find a nice, you know, calmer, slicker area. You can usually find baby tarp and rolling or breaking the surface. There they are. They're at a 10 o'clock going left to right. Start I got them. I got them. Yep. Angling out. Yep. Coming right out to us. Yeah. Couldn't see him. Oh, so cool to watch them eat that fly like that. <laughs> it's fun watching them eat it, but they do miss it a lot because they try to eat it so hard, you know? Yeah. That was super cool to see him eat like I should that. say, awesome three bites. <laughs> you called it. I said, they're gonna be right over here, coming right down from that point. God, that's sick. Well, he wasn't coming off. He was hooked good. It's just like the big ones, just a little smaller. <laughs> Cooperative. Hell yeah. That was fun, bro. That was sweet. Thank you. Yeah, bro. That's my first fish since I had my two surgeries. Really? I, I haven't fished. I've taken people fishing, but I haven't fished. Thank you for that. Oh, absolutely. Glad I got to watch that. That was cool. Fall here in South Florida isn't like other parts of the country. We don't have, the leaves aren't changing colors and we're not getting frost in the morning, but there is a change. You know, the days are shorter, a tremendous amount of bait starts pouring down both coasts, the east and the west coast. And a lot of the game fish, because the water does cool off a little bit, 
tend to be more active throughout the whole day. In the summertime, the water's hot. Fish are active early and late. In the wintertime, they're active in the middle of the day. All these species we're chasing, especially bonefish, permanent tarpon, rely on a certain water temperature. They like it between 75 and 82 degrees. This time of year, the water temperatures range from 79 to 82. So we're right in the happy zone. We're not above or below. So it's a great time of year to, to really focus on catching a slam. Yeah. <laughs> that was so visual, you know. You see every aspect of that. Doesn't get much better than that one. No. That's so cool. The other bites I just got a strip struck, you know, they just weren't there. Yeah. I think they're good at eating and blowing it out. Yeah, they push they water out. It, yeah. yeah. Not ready yet. I'll let you grab this one. Perfect. Sweet. Thanks, bro. This is so fun. So much fun. Tarpon is definitely my favorite fish to chase, regardless of with a fly rod or, or what have you. Big tarpon, especially. But the little ones are just as, just as fun. You hook these little guys, they do everything the big guys do. They jump, they run, they're in shallow, clear water where you can see them. They eat flies, they eat lures, they'll eat bait. It's a great fish to catch. It's kind of, South Florida is, is somewhat of a nursery ground for the smaller tarpon. Big tarpon go offshore and spawn, their eggs drift in, they settle here in the Everglades and on the lower coastlines, and the smaller tarpon, until they're big enough to, to be a migratory size, they grow up in all the estuaries around South Florida and Biscayne Bay, the Everglades, and all throughout the Keys. One thing that's so hard doing this fishing is it's so visual, and, these, and when you're throwing a fly that suspends on the surface, it's, who oh, keeps ripping, you're right in front of fish. Strip that. That's got to get eaten. That was perfect. Good. There you go. <laughs> it's there. That's a perfect example <laughs> of what I was getting ready to say. You see how you, you stripped? You yeah. stripped and felt for him? It's so hard when you see that bite to not want to snatch the rod back. Yeah. You know? And nine times out of ten, when you snatch the rod back, you miss him. And fly fishing is definitely the most fun way to fish for these little guys. It is. For sure, definitely the most coolest way to do it. You know what else is, is it's faster, you know? Yeah. Like when you throw a spinning rod, you throw a lure, they'll eat it. But if you don't get a bite, then you gotta reel it all the way in before yeah. you can recast. A fly rod, you just pick it up and put it back in That's there. That's true. You're back in the game faster. That's true. Another unique thing about chasing these smaller sized tarpon, especially here in South Florida, is they inhabit the same type of environments that the snook do. So it's not uncommon when you're tarpon fishing to occasionally come across a snook. And they are just as, as weary, they're just as hard to get to eat, but at the same time, they're an awesome game fish. Look at this snook. 
Come on, eat that fish. Eat it. That was so badass. <laughs> I don't believe that fish that let us get that close, man. That was nuts. <laughs> I was like, there's no way he's gonna bite. Oh, maybe he might. <laughs> Good cast. That was nuts. I didn't think he was gonna eat at all. Here's your tarpon coming back, the original bunch. Right over here. You good on the trees? Yeah, should be good. It just shows you how everything around here, every game fish is out here sitting on these shorelines with all this bait. You know? Yeah. Out in the open. Yeah. This time of year, uh, we're starting to get these cold fronts now in October, uh, pushing a lot of bait south. Everything was kind of quiet for a little while, but now pilchard's just about everywhere you go. All this bait's starting to pull a lot of the fish out of the trees, and a lot of fish are starting to come in with the bait as well, which uh, gives us a lot of opportunities to catch snook or tarpon, which follow these bait balls around and just feed off of them. The reason bonefish, permanent tarpon are thrilling fish to chase is because they're not easy to catch. It doesn't matter whether you're throwing spin, fly, these fish are spooky, they're in super clear water, and the angler has to do everything right to be able to catch them. Also, the guy on the back of the boat, pulling the boat, has to be super, super stealthy and quiet, or you're gonna spook the fish. So that in itself is a draw to chasing these game fish. It's not a, it's not a fishery that you go out there and expect to catch numbers. It's more about the quality than the quantity. And to catch all three in one day is really an angler or a guide's dream. All right, I got a school of fish coming right in at three o'clock, 15 feet, 20 feet on the bottom. Start throwing, right there. Go right, right and drop it, right close, close, drop it, drop it. Right there, you're, you're right on top of them, you're just to the right of you. Got him on, bud. Got him. And I'm like, why am I not getting a bite? They all rushed it, you know? <laughs> a bonefish is a shallow water fish is throughout the Caribbean, all throughout the Bahamas, Belize, Mexico. The biggest bonefish tend to be here in the Florida Keys and in certain places in the Bahamas. It's an awesome fish to chase. They are unlike the permit. They are an honest fish. If you do approach them quietly, make a good cast, and do an accurate retrieve, you're gonna get a response from the fish. And once hooked, they blaze into the reel, get way into the backing if you're on a fly rod. And, you know, a three or four pound bonefish will pull a 10 pound largemouth bass backwards. I mean, they're tremendously strong for their size. A lot of fun to catch. Tight fish with a fly rod, I'll take oh, yeah, it. Yeah, bro, that was sweet. Thank you. Good spot and feed. That was sick. They're such good fish. They're so amazing. Let's take a look at it for a second. Yeah, that's, that's what's I mean, awesome. Look at how camo those suckers are, man. You know? I really enjoy fishing in Biscayne Bay, especially with Pete. And the, the reason being is I grew up fishing there. I have memories on all these flats. Pete, is young in his career. I've been a bit of a mentor. And when we're together in Biscayne Bay, though I have all these memories of all these places, it may be Pete's first time visiting there. Or because I don't visit it all the time anymore, I'm in the Everglades or lower in the Keys, I'll go to a flat that I haven't been to in four or five years and I have a memory. So sharing these memories with Pete makes it especially special to me.
haven't already, go to my website, theseahuntertv.com. You can watch past episodes, shop apparel, book a fishing charter with the Sea Hunter Fishing Group, and watch some behind the scenes. Anybody that's ever chased permit on the flats knows that they're not an honest fish. And what I mean by that is, you can make the best cast as an angler, make the best presentation, have the best lure or best bait, and sometimes the fish occasionally will bite, and most of the time he doesn't. You do the same thing with a bonefish, you make a good cast and you present the bait or the fly well, nine times out of 10 you get a bite. The same with a tarpon, they're both spooky fish, it all has to be done right, but they cooperate when you do it right. A permanent is not that way. You can do it right 10 times, and nine out of 10, they're kind of, they're gonna wave the flag as they, as they swim away, unhooked. It seems like more than any other type of fishing, when you're chasing permit, if it can go wrong, it will. Like 15 feet off the boat, 20 feet, I see a body going away. A little right, drop it, yeah. Got him on, bro. <laughs> oh, no. he came off. I don't know if he cut me off or pulled off. Those look like little permit, were they? Hook broke. Oh, God. It sucks. Damn. We're just getting ready to get fun there. Yep. When you're looking for a good spot, to find some permit or bonefish, you, you pretty much just want to find a spot where you can pull kind of with the current so that the fish are facing to you rather than away from you. Uh, you also want to look around and see see what kind of life's on the flat. You know, you want to make sure there's other rays and sharks and houndfish and pinfish and just about anything moving around. Usually when you find all that other life around, and you see rays mudding and, and all that, there's usually almost every time fish around somewhere. All right, I got a whole pack of fish coming in at 11 o'clock, point your rod. Right there about 80, 80 yards, or 50, 60 yards, you see all the bodies coming in? Oh, out here? Yeah. Yeah. A whole group of fish. Let's go nice and easy. There we go, baby! Hell yeah. <laughs> we catch this fish, you know what that means. <laughs> you got us a slam, Bubba. Oh man, that was sweet. Those things were ferocious. Bro, it's amazing. That was such a perfect lineup. That was a good fly shot, too. It would have been a good fly shot. Really good fly shot. Looks like a good fish, too. Fish are the best. <laughs> they are. You're a badass fish, bro. I got a uh, a net, Pete. Okay. In this front hatch. All right. It's one of those fold-out, extendable ones. Uh huh. And if you get it wet, it won't take the slime off the fish. All right. Yeah, it'll be good. Many types of fishing have different strategies, and a lot of people have the mistake the type of fishing that we do here on the flats especially as just going fishing. It's more hunting than fishing the way we're doing this. You know you go to these shallow clear areas it's all visual so, so you have to be able to see these fish especially when you're chasing bonefish permanent tarpon. Try and bring him right around this right side for you. And the current is flying across this flat. 
Yeah, it is. Sorry, bro. There you go. <laughs> Grand, <laughs> slam. Grand slam, bro. That's, That's what awesome, that is. Bro. Hell yeah. Whew. I've been fortunate and blessed to, to have caught a lot of slams, whether guiding anglers from around the world to their first slam, or whether I was an angler myself growing up, or throughout the years of the, the occasional times I get to fish to catch a slam. You, you never forget a slam, and it makes it especially great when you do it with a buddy that you enjoy being with.